how's it going? I hope you're enjoying your weekend so far. It's been um, a really productive day already today. It's about noon and it was 27 degrees last night. So I'm in multiple layers of my shirt, vest, coat, and a cowl. Starting to warm up a little bit, but boy, it's nice. It's like a true fall day today. My mom and I already went out to the local produce stand and picked up some pumpkins, gourds, and squash. I have a little display I wanna do by our back door I thought I'd show you. And then I've got tons of bulbs to plant. Like I haven't planted a single one of my tulip bulbs yet. And I have four more containers I need to clean out and I'm gonna to try to cobble together some kind of fall arrangement. I have a few plants hanging around. I don't know if I have enough to like make two matching sets of pots, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm also going to a cider pressing party at one, uh, which is not very far from now. It is 12, 17. Um, so I think I have time to get a couple of the pots cleaned out before that. And then I'll have to do the rest of it later this afternoon. Um, but it's just been a nice day. Aaron and his brother, Tim, are starting to put Christmas lights up on our house today because we've had reports that we are gonna get snow very, very soon. And our roof just is not, it's not safe to be up there after there's a bunch of snow and ice. So they, um, last year, Aaron did the lights early and he wanted to just get started on them early this year too. And I think that's really smart. So anyway, I'm gonna grab the trailer here after I unload it right there so I can go unload those pots. So you can see here are some of the Christmas lights. Tons of Christmas lights. Also when Aaron parks his trailer in here, he always backs it in for me so I can pull it straight out of the garage. But I'm the one who used it last and I'm the world's worst backer when it comes to little trailers like this. I can back a big trailer up, no problem. These little ones are so squirrely. That's exciting. We have a fun video coming up. <laughs> So you probably recognize where we're at right now. We're up in the Versailles garden and these are the two pots I'm going to clear out today and you know, they look decent still, but the potato vine, because it's been getting so cold, it's starting to really show. Um, this morning it was completely wilted down and it's picked up a bit, but it's starting to change color and get burned. And I really want to get something in here for a fall before it's too late and I don't have anything left to use. So anyway, I'm hoping it all comes out in one big chunk and then I can put it in here. Yes. That ended up being way heavier than I thought it was going to be. So I tipped the pot over, it all came out in one chunk, but this chunk, I don't even know how much it weighs, but I'm gonna need to have Aaron help me get it in there and then throw it away, because I'm not supposed to be lifting super heavy things, and that's heavy. All right, pot number two, and this one looks way worse. That's weird. They're not that far apart from each other, and this one took the frost a whole lot worse. Look at that. Boy, they've been great pots this year, though. I've really enjoyed them. Look at the roots, whoa. Okay, so now since that's all I can do here, I just have to wait for Aaron to get back. I'm gonna clean these pots up a bit. All right, they're looking really good. I just gave them a really quick once over with a little bit of spray paint because anything dark colored in our area gets hard water spots really bad on it. So usually every year I either have to do a spray paint or like for these wicker pots, I use Danish oil on those um, because it gives it more of a deep brown. But 
it really spruced them up and they look really nice. All right, so it's 1246 right now and I'm supposed to meet my parents at the garden center at one. I'm going to the apple press party with them because Aaron's busy today. Should be a fun time. You guys about ready? Not gonna lie, mom, your desk looks a little messy. <gasps> <laughs> I am busy. Are you? I have lots of things that I'm doing, yes. Concrete orders. <laughs> That's another reason why I wanted to come down here because I'm going to look through the catalog and see if I can order a fountain that will fit our new vegetable garden area. Oh, look, Dutch oven desserts. Right here. Oh, wow. yeah, let's I got myself a plate of food. It's looking really good. We're gonna find a place to sit and go eat. Yes, Jesus does me. The Bible tells me so. All right, good job, kids. <laughs> All right, we're just leaving. Got myself some apple cider fresh pressed. It was a really fun party. Got some lunch. Now we're heading back. So I'm gonna go home and finish up my projects. Just made it back to Andrews. And so I'm gonna run through the nursery and see if I can find a few more cabbage because I think I could use a few more in those black containers that I just tried to clean out. Made it home. So I'm gonna go see what Aaron and Tim are doing right now. I think they're working on lights. See if they can load up my plants for me that are too heavy. Yep. How's it going? Lots of lights. Good. How are you guys? Good. Good. Are you just putting clips on everything? Yeah. So these are all for the roof line of the house. And this is how they access it. Right through this window right here. Can you guys come help me lift this stuff into the trailer? Sure. Okay. The boys came out and cleaned up my mess and even they had a hard time lifting those root balls. They were so heavy. But don't they look nice? I mean, I still have a little cleaning to do around them, but I'll do that after I'm done planting. Look at that. Look how sharp they look. Just having a quick little layer of uh, spray paint. It just brightens them up, freshens them up, and I can't see any hard water marks on them at all anymore. All right, so now I'm gonna go gather up some fresh soil, uh, which typically, if there's any soil left over for fall plantings, I'll just use that. But since it all came out in one big, big root ball, I'm gonna have to put new soil in them and then I'm gonna try to cobble together some plants. I grabbed some cabbage while we were down at Andrews. Um, so hopefully I've got what I need. Oh, look at this, you guys. Stop me in my tracks. It looks like Aaron is going to be doing some colorful lights this year. Okay, so we got clear, there's green, and red. All right, so this is what I have to work with. I've got some really cute violas. These are called Penny Citrus Mix, and I really like the orange. And then I've got some ornamental cabbage, which are kind of more of a rosette shape. These are called Songbird Pink. And then I've got these, which I think are ornamental kale. Yep. Kale Coral Queen. And see how these have a little bit more of a wild wildness to them. They're not quite as tight as these. And then I also have some Super Bells. These are called Spicy. And I think they are so gorgeous. And they hold up really well to cold temperatures. And then this is called Kale. It's a Scarlet Boar or an Ornamental Kale. And these grow quite tall. So these might be a good centerpiece. All right, so this is what we ended up with. I went and got these out of the greenhouse. These are a Lonicera pileata, privet honeysuckle. They're actually a zone five, uh, and they're kind of a ground cover, and they really look good trailing out of the front side of this pot. I got the spicy super bells, perfect color. And then I tucked some of those orange violas just kind of all over the perimeter. There's a white kale, purple cabbage, or pink cabbage, I guess I should say. Some of the scarlet boar kale over here, a little white pigeon cabbage. I think it's really cute. Now I did do something different as a centerpiece, which I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. You're gonna have to wait for another video for the grand reveal. Um, that's a whole different project. So one down, 
one to go. Second one is done minus the centerpiece. And I think it's a really pretty blend of plants. Okay, so I've got two more containers to work on. There they are working on the lights. I'm so glad they're doing it and not me. How much more of the house do you have to do? Uh, the, pretty much the whole bottom. The whole bottom section. So quite a bit. <laughs> on here. Yeah, but you're getting the hard stuff. Well, Tim's getting the hard stuff done right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's steep too. Yeah, that's scary. And he was telling me that he's uh, afraid of heights. <laughs> are you really? So he's like the this. one doing the hard stuff. Oh my gosh. Well, out of the three of us, you are the most spry <laughs> by far. Okay, so these are the next two pots I'm going to switch out. Um, they don't look that bad. In fact, the Lovey Dovey Super Tunias look pretty good still, but they're pink and it's like deep into fall and I'm ready for some fall color up here because I have the corn stalks and then that long planter that I did and I don't know, I just kind of want them to reflect the season. The centerpiece, however, does not look super great after the cold. You can see it's kind of crisping up and the Super Tunias toward the backside are looking a little, a little bit tired. And here is what I have left. I went and grabbed these, love these. These are Jade Princess Penicetum. Look at the seed heads on this. Isn't that pretty? They look like corn, like corn stalks, real thick leaves. I've got a couple of violas left, one of the Scarlet Boar Kale, so I won't be using that. I've got four of the Pigeon White Cabbage and then two of the larger red kale. All right, so I'm gonna get these cleaned out. I'll see if I need any soil, and then I'm gonna start planting. I'm gonna leave the Creeping Jenny because most of it still looks pretty darn good, and I like the drape. I think it's really pretty. Well, I think it's kind of hard to see because it's so dappled up here. We've got sun and shade going on, but I think they turned out super pretty. I love the Creeping Jenny, the Red Kale. I've got the really pretty grasses, the Penicetums, which I think are a great contrast to the staircase, just the bright pop of green. And then we've got two White Pigeon Cabbage and then one Viola, which I had one for each pot left. So you see these containers coming down the stairs like this. So it looks very pretty that way. And then you also see them, you know, of course, walking straight up. So I think both angles are really pretty. And then here's the one in the full sun. You maybe can see the colors a little bit better here. I think it's just really pretty and I'm so thankful that I had enough on my shadow, Jeez, I'm so thankful that I had enough stuff to fill these up. And this is what the trailer looks like. <laughs> just full of garbage. Look at all this. So I gotta go take all of this to the dumpster. And then I've got one kale left, which I'll hang on to. I'll probably find a use for it. So while I was out here by the driveway, I wanted to give you guys an update on how the self-watering containers are doing. So today is October the 14th, I believe. It was 28, no, 27 degrees last night. And look at these. Look at these, they're just amazing. All the way down, and I know, Again, it's hard to see. It's a weird time of day where we're getting lots of long shadows, which kind of worries me. I don't think I'm gonna get all my projects done today, but this is the above and beyond combination. Um, so we've got Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum, Super Tunia uh, Vista Fuchsia, and Super Tunia Vista Silverberry. This is the lighter colored one, but they are just <laughs> stunning. Really happy with how these containers have done and really, really happy with how long they're lasting through the season. Lots of pretty views right now. Look at all those pansies. This is an area I'm excited about for next year. So you remember we put in all of these boxwoods here um, so that we could mirror the same arch that we've got over on the other side, which kind of created, because this boxwood hedge for this one right here against the fence was already here. So it kind of created this triangle where we get to plant. And it's right in our entryway. So when you drive in, this is what you see right here. So I've been just trying to think of ideas of things I wanna put in here, maybe like three ob red obelisk beech trees, you know, like one, two, three, just something to come up and be really architectural and beautiful right there. Um, I do kind of want to create a hedge here because I don't 
want the house to be visible right from the opening of our property. I kind of want it to be, you know, shrouded a little bit, but we'll see. That will be hopefully next year we'll tackle that area. So the other couple of things that I wanted to get done today were uh, planting the bulbs and then doing a little pumpkin display by our back door. I think I'm gonna do the pumpkin display first and then see how many bulbs I can get in the ground. I'm not sure. Getting a little bit like late afternoon right now. The sun is setting like at 7.30, maybe earlier than that now, I have to check. Look at the ground, you guys. It was so windy last night. I had just cleaned this area off. There's the Halloween planter. Yeah, this needs a little maintenance. So this right here is what I'm wanting to display. So I've got right here from the farm stand this morning, I got some really pretty pumpkins. Cinderella, there's a gourd shape of a pear and some other really pretty things with neat stems. Got some acorn squash. Anyway, I kind of went with, and I already set a couple up there. I kind of went with all whites and greens um, just because of the copper. I didn't really want a bunch of orange pumpkins on there. Uh, so I'm gonna need to clean this area up, like put these where they actually belong. And then I brought the blower up to kind of clean up this whole area. So this little area was actually kind of an afterthought. I ended up with a few extra fall decorations that I didn't use inside. So I thought, you know what, since I used this stand for houseplants all summer and I needed to take them in yesterday, I may as well clean it up and then just do a little fall display with whatever I have left. So I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. I would love to have some corn stalks or wheat or something like that and I don't have anything like that. So we'll just have to kind of go with it and see how it goes. I think it'll look fallish either way. So I already showed you the pumpkins and like gourds and squash that I have. Uh, these are the leftover things I had from inside. So I have these birch branches or logs that I used in a container arrangement a couple years ago. I'd need to take these things off right here, but they're a really pretty look. And then I just have this little basket full of just random things like there's some Indian corn in here, some glittery artificial pumpkins, um, which, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'll use orange in there or not. There are some gorgeous picks. Look at this. So there's like some amber gems, I don't know. Some glittery metal leaf, um, like different shaped leaves, little glittery acorns. I used a couple of these on one of our mantles inside, but I just didn't need them all. And then I've got some artificial leaves that kind of have more of a natural look to them. And I have a lot of these. These were growing in my parents' orchard, volunteers from who knows when, uh, but they're just like hollowed out little baby gourds. They're really cute. So we'll see how this thing goes. So I think it turned out really pretty. Of course, I think it looks better in real life than it does on camera as per usual. Uh, but I did find a use for that last scarlet boar kale, which is kind of fun. And I'm glad I only have one plant on this stand to water now. Uh, and then I just kind of filled each layer with different things. I did some practice. I, I gold leafed this pumpkin the other night. I think it's pretty and shiny. The birch branches look really pretty. I think the colors turned out really great. And I technically only used three orange pumpkins. So that counts. That one right there. And then that one there. Everything else I think looks really good. And the orange ones do too against the copper. And this is the stand that uh, Gardener Supply sent me out uh, earlier this spring. And it was the perfect solution for this weird spot. Let me back up and show you. So that is our back kitchen door. And it's just like this random corner. Like what do you put there? So this stand works just great. You can display plants or whatever, you know, just like I've done right now. And then this is all I've got left. I think it did pretty good. Got rid of everything else. So I'm just gonna put this stuff away until I need to put all of this stuff away and get ready for Christmas, which will be in no time. Okay, so my last project of the day is to plant some bulbs. I was hoping to plant all of them. I think I have 
maybe 325, 350 today. I don't think I'm gonna get them all planted because I've still got to haul wood up to the house um, because it's supposed to get really cold again tonight. And I've got a little bit of spot watering to do in the greenhouse and I wanna do all of that before I lose light out here. But I'll get a few in the ground. I'll show you at least what I've got here to plant, all the varieties. So I just realized I don't have pictures for most of the bulbs, but I recommend that you Google search these because they are all so, so pretty. So these are some I picked up at the garden center where I work. There's Tulip Boa Vista. There's a Narcissus Golden Pearl. Tulip Peach Melba. And this is a gorgeous one. Tulip Movado. Look at how pretty. Won't that look gorgeous against my Labella Pock? If you remember those tulips from last year, oh my word. I think this is gonna be a stunning combination. And then we've got a few bulbs that Burby's Best sent over. Um, thank you Burby's Best for that. I'm really excited. White for me and blue for baby, baby on the way. So cute. So in this bag right here, we've got Mount Tacoma, which I planted a ton of last year and I wanted to plant more, so this is wonderful. And then for baby boy, the Tulip Blue Parrot. They'd be very pretty together. And then this box right here is exciting. This is excitement. So all of these bulbs came from Eden Brothers. <laughs> Tulip La Bella Puck. Um, there are 10, I believe, per bag. I have 200 of them in this box. In fact, I ordered 400. I gave um, 200, went out to my parents' house and 200 stayed here, so I'll have 300 total of this bulb. Okay, so now I need to find my drill till. We just got that in a mail in the mail. I opened it in the mail time video. I just organized out here. I don't know how I don't, can't find my stuff still. This thing makes planting so easy. So here is my bulb planting setup. I've got all of my tulip bulbs and narcissus in there. I've got bulb food that I put at the bottom of each hole, and this is called uh, bulb tone from Espoma. I've got the weeder tool attached to the end of my drill till, which is attached to the drill. So we did have to get a bigger drill. We had an 18 volt and it just wasn't cutting it. Um, so that's one thing I learned about the drill till and maybe it's our soil is so heavy in some places um, because the guide said you could get away with using anything as low as a 12 volt and I just don't think that that's possible. Maybe if you already have super fluffy soil, in which case you don't even need the drill till. Um, so we went and got a different drill, which I'll show you. It is awesome, it works really, really good. It has a lot of power. We needed one anyway because, you know, we do a lot of projects around here. So here is what it is. So what is that, a 20 volt drill? It's a 60 volt, I think that's a battery. I don't know, I don't know much about tools, but I know that this one works well. So now I'm gonna head to where I'm gonna plant. So this is where all the labels are from last year. They start right about here and then they kind of make a big drift right about to here. So I'm gonna start in, and it's gonna be kind of hard because there's still a bunch of stuff up in here, but I'm just gonna try to make a bunch of holes and plant the rest of them in this area so it's like one big mass of that one kind of tulip. Okay, I got all the labella tulips planted, but I don't have enough time to get all the rest of them. So I'll plant those somewhere else, and then hopefully next spring they all come up beautifully and you'll be able to see them. But this whole area should be completely packed out with labels. If they all come up like they should, it's gonna be gorgeous. Now, I can tell you one thing. The drill till is super nice for areas where it's tighter, like you know where you just can't get into very easy, but areas like back in here and right here would be much easier just to use a shovel and kind of excavate the whole area, lay your tulips in, and then put the dirt back over. Um, but the drill till definitely does make it easier in tight spots. And there was a couple other things I wanted to show you before I was all done with um, today's video. This coleus pretty much, well, almost all of it, uh, except for that piece right there. This went through 27 degrees, you guys. And it's, it's not really that protected. Like there's open sky right there, there's a little bit of, cover on that side but the wind comes from this direction it was the wind was blowing and it was freezing cold and hail was 
coming down last night and that's how it looks so nice also this tree look at how glorious this tree is exceptionally beautiful fall color this is an ash tree which actually they do not do well in our area um i've had to have a lot pruned out of it in fact you might be able to see some dead branches coming up right right in here but they are just the most gorgeous tree so i'm going to do whatever i can to keep this one happy i just love the color variations a lot of red orange and yellow let's see if we get up close on it I don't know how well you can see, but um, there are borer holes. My hands are so dirty. Um, there are borer holes all throughout the trunk of this tree. If you can see that one, that's a big one. There's a borer hole there, right in here. And this tree is super old. So it kind of has those things going against it. So I'm just really hoping that it stays the course. I'll be fertilizing and making sure like everything stays pruned and as healthy as, as can be. It gets plenty of water because it's right out in the middle of one of our lawns. So it gets water whenever the grass is getting sprinkled. So that's quite often in the summertime. Aaron has them running almost every day um, when it's 100, over 100 degrees. That's how we keep it looking so nice. And then one last spot, look at the alyssum. It looks like snow. So the Russian sage definitely needs to be cut back at this point, it's looking a little bit tired but this alyssum is totally kicking butt it's like engulfing everything around it <laughs> look at that this is definitely one to plant in your garden so this is a mix of white knight and blushing princess two different varieties because i didn't have enough of one variety to make it work so i just used both and they just have done wonderful. One thing that we, Aaron and I have talked about is this area actually doesn't have any drip system to it. It gets a little bit of water from like that grassy area back there. Um, it gets more water on the far side and actually the alyssum is doing better on the side where it doesn't even get <laughs> any water. Like we were supplementing a little bit in the summer when it was really hot. Um, we would come out with a hose and give it a little bit if it looked droopy, but that's it. And that's how it performs. It's amazing. So that's it you guys for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the projects. It's just a bunch of random stuff. I'm trying to use up some plants so that I don't waste them, you know, trying to make sure all the pots are transitioned to fall. And I keep saying that I'm done transitioning for fall and I always seem to find another container that I forgot about or something. You know, it's just how it goes. I probably won't get them all done and that's okay because before you know it, it's gonna be winter here. Um, we have possible snow by like the 21st of October. I hope that they're wrong on that prediction because that would make me really sad. I need a little bit more fall than that. So anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me today and we will see you in the next video. Bye.